is this? Tabletop Island. Let's see what this is all about. Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Renard, your host, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 50 regular board games of all time. Uh, this is obviously going to be my list here. I just got done with the vintage board game top 50, so if you haven't checked that out, I'll leave a link in the description so you can start off that one because that one was awesome. But without further ado, I'm excited to jump into this. I'll first leave a disclosure here. I haven't played a bunch of games in the world, so you'll notice a lot of games that maybe played out in your collection. I know I'm not the heavy gamer either at least not yet and with covid it's kind of delayed that a little bit as well so i don't have like a million euro games um, but i do have some really solid ones and some really fun ones for you guys to check out so i hope you guys enjoy this list but without further ado let's start off with number 50 the street fighter miniatures game oh man so I know this is a relatively new game and it just creeped onto my list. It feels bad having it at 50 to be honest with you, but I haven't played through every character or every game mode, but this game surprised me. I wasn't sure what to think about it. Obviously, I love the Street Fighter IP, but we're rambling here. This is a combat game obviously much like the video game if you're familiar with the ip and you have these amazingly detailed miniatures on these boards that have this really nice terrain that's made out of cardboard i plan to upgrade that you'll see soon <laughs> but the game is awesome the system that you use to fight with the cards because each character has their own deck there's like 30 characters here which is ridiculous i even created my own storage solution that i'll actually do a video on separately at some point on here yeah, this game was awesome. It really captured the essence that I loved about the game very well, including the combo aspect of the video game, which I very much like. But there are a few scrimmage games that will be on this list as well. I do see this one climbing up over time, but I think I need to get a lot more plays before I start to put it in a contender with the higher games on my list. But number 50, the Street Fighter Miniatures board game. Number 49, Godzilla Tokyo Clash. This game is by Funko and some of my favorite design team over at Prospero Hall. Oh man, I did tell you there were going to be a number of scrimmage games on this list. I didn't tell you how soon, but this one is a fun one. It is Godzilla themed, obviously. I love Godzilla. The miniatures are fantastic. They're like little toys. Obviously, they're not the most detailed in the world, but they work for what we're trying to accomplish in this game. It's a tile game to where you have your board set up depending on uh, how you want the board to look. There's a few kind of options that it shows in the rule book, but obviously you can get pretty creative. And depending on the number of players depends on how many of the tiles you'll want to use. Now, I will leave a disclosure here, and I will also leave a link in the description of my review. But with this game, I highly prefer it at four player count, which is why it doesn't sit so high on my list. I don't get four players to the table, at least not currently with COVID going on. And if I do get that number of players um, safely, of course, I, there's just a few games I would rather play over this one. But this one is awesome. It does play with two players, but I'll be honest with you. There's a few other scrimmage games I'd prefer more if I only have access to two players. This one, it really shines at four and you are moving your characters through the map and throwing objects at each other. You're fighting each other, throwing each other. You have your own custom decks and they all have their own kind of vibe and style to them to kind of fit thematically for that character. I love that so much and that's why it's sitting on this list at number 49. Number 48, The Resistance. This is actually going to be the most played board game in my collection. I love social deduction games and this one really kind of scratched that itch I was looking for. A game that allowed me to communicate with my friends. The premise of the game is you were going through missions to try to accomplish them while a spy is trying to infiltrate your mission. And there are going to be random cards dealt out to each player that indicate whether or not they're going to be an advocate for the uh, mission itself or they're going to be a spy and everyone's trying to convince themselves that they're not a spy so they get brought onto the mission because only spies can fail the mission and if they get a certain amount of fails they win if the kind of resistance wins in the game obviously they're going to win oh man 
This one is a whole lot of fun. I absolutely love this game. I don't get it to the table very often, and I'll be honest with you, as time goes by, if I don't see a lot of play, which as of right now, I don't see a foresee a whole lot of play for it, it may start to go down on my list, but don't let that detract, detract you away from this game because it's an awesome one. And if you have friends who like lying to each other, getting in each other's faces and pointing at each other while being very frustrated with each other, Oh man, this is the one to try out. And I'm sure there's a bunch out there. There are games such as um, Secret Hitler. There's a whole abundance and a whole array of games in this specific genre that you may also like as well. So it's worth checking out. But The Resistance sits on this list for that very reason. Number 47, Heads Will Roll. Yeah, this isn't a really small kind of packet here. And there is a little pouch, which you can kind of see here where everything is held within. It is a pocket size game. This is why I very much enjoy this and it recently got it. I actually got a review copy. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out my review. It's something that recently uh, fulfilled on Kickstarter and they should be having it on their website after that fulfillment takes place. I'm excited to get the newer one because there's a few different changes that they've made that I very much enjoy because it adds a little bit more dynamic. Well, I can still play with this one, but we're rambling. Essentially, you have skulls, a dragon skull um, that you are kind of rolling in in your hand, almost like dice, rolling it out onto the table and you are taking the dragon skull to flick it to hit the golden skull. There's a few different color skulls. There's silver and there's black. Now, when you flick the gold, um, the a dragon skull to hit the golden skull you get a point however you get more points if you can draw an invisible line between two of the same color skulls on the path that it took to get to the golden skull and if the skulls itself are orientated the same direction you get even more points so there's a lot of different ways that you kind of have to plan and organize yourself to flick it in certain paths because you can place the skull wherever you want now that sounds easier said than done and even in some shots you feel like you can get it because it's right there and you still miss it's frustrating i love it and this is probably my one of my favorite pocket games because there is one ahead of this at least as of right now because again this is still relatively new but this is on that list for that very reason and i'll have a link in the description so you can check out my review number 46 coup I know what you're thinking, a lot of you guys who have been gaming for a long time are probably tired of this game. You probably started it off early in your board gaming um, kind of journey and it's probably a game that's gotten rather stale for you. This is a new game for me, right before quarantine hit was the first time I ever played this game and it blew me away. I love the social aspect um, that I get out of resistance out of this, however it doesn't take a whole lot of um, kind of trusting your friends per se, a whole lot of persuasion and a whole lot of communication because a game like Resistance, while I do enjoy that game very much, it can put you in a position as to where your friend just really has it out for you and can convince everyone in the group that you're just someone that they can't trust. In this game, if they try to convince themselves that they can't trust you and they try to call you out on your bluff, you lose a character. So there's a lot of risk in terms of making decisions like that. So you have to be positive and you want to approach it accordingly but essentially in this game you have a bunch of different cards that have their own abilities and you're one by one trying to be the last one standing and eliminate the other i believe spies i'm not too sure i believe it's like government it uh, individuals in the game not too familiar with the theme to be honest with you and the theme isn't really what grabs me so don't let that lure you away because the gameplay is excellent but that's gonna be cool and I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out my review. Number 45 is gonna be Western Legends. This is a game that I've had for quite some time and I finally got to play it online. That's kind of what kind of brought me into this game. And I had a friend of mine who taught me the reviews. It was a blast. We played a rather short game and I'll be honest with you, I'll never play a short game again because I think it needs a long game to really experience everything you want in the game. Now with the game itself, I've since gotten a few plays and I think with some more plays over time, and once I paint the miniatures and try out some of the expansions, I think I'll really start to dive into this a little bit more. I did get to play with one of the expansions, but I've yet to play with Anti Up, and I also back the Kickstarter. This game is essentially a sandbox game. What does that mean? You are uh, cowboys who are moving through an entire map and accomplishing whatever it is you want. 
obviously you need to get to a certain point system in the game, but you can do that of a few different ways. You can go gambling at a casino, especially with the anti-up expansion, it'll add more to that. I've read it, not played it, so I can't advocate for that just yet. You can go rob a bank if you want, because that's what outlaws do. <laughs> or you can be uh, on the sheriff's side of things and go catch outlaws and get points for bringing them back. There is so many different things you can do, and with some of the expansions such as anti-up, being able to do like a train heist and things of that nature, you can even bring cattle across the map it's awesome. This game's offered so much for me, and I'm very interested in seeing more games in the sandbox realm. But as of right now, this is the only one that's going to sit on uh, the list that's a sandbox game. I'm rambling, but that's going to be Western Legends. Number 44, Pictionary Air. I know. I know what you're thinking, Bernardo. You have Pictionary on this list. That's ridiculous. This one's very different and very unique. It has this electronic pen, which you can draw things in the air that you are trying to uh, relay to your opponents or your team members, I should say. And it almost reminds me, which in the commercial I did for my review, which I'll have a link in the description for, I do kind of a whole Disney thing because it's almost like reminds me of those intros where it's like welcome to the Disney Channel and it does the whole shape of Mickey yeah I'm ridiculous but this game is awesome it really brings people into Pictionary that aren't the greatest of drawers because while you do get to draw into the air and whoever's holding the app can see what's drawn in the air you can also interact with it such as an umbrella you can have while you're kind of holding it underneath it with rain dropping on there's so many different ways you can interact with it which really makes it so individuals who aren't the greatest of drawers can really enjoy it it's a fantastic family game and I've yet to play it with a group that isn't enjoying this game so it sits on this list for that very reason it's a game I can pack and bring with me wherever I am it fits right into this and to be honest with you even this box might be a little too big for it but that's gonna be Pictionary Air Number 43, Coconuts. Yes, I am a big fan of vintage games because of the toy factor and the fast-paced environment that it provides for it. This is a, what I would imagine a vintage game would be in a dexterity form in the modern times. Coconuts is a dexterity game where you're taking these um, giant plastic monkeys that have this catapult mechanism built into them. You place these little kind of rubber silicone-ish coconuts and you're flicking them into cups. Now, while you're doing so, you get points for getting certain cups. Cups. Obviously, if you have a full set, depending on what variant of the game you play, um, you end up winning um, the game. So while you're doing so, you are trying to hurry up and flick it on your turn to get specific cups, such as the red one gives you another action to kind of flick another coconut. And that can benefit you to stacking up your cups accordingly. Now, I've actually created with um, my friend group an abundance of different ways to play this game. We have cards we've even created as well. That's kind of why I haven't done a review on this just yet, because I have so much I want to talk about with this game. And surprisingly, it was one that um, was really close to being one of my most played games. Resistance beat it out just barely. We get this to the table all the time. It's definitely been a while, obviously, with COVID. I haven't really met with my group to play this very much. I see it going down over time. And honestly, when I begin to do a, a top 100 um, list, which will probably happen next year, because it was really hard to do this list. Um, but I see this one going down a bit. But if you like the dexterity games and you love the theme it is so wacky so funny and i just absolutely adore this game i actually bought two copies because this one only plays four there's a duo that plays two but i wanted to be able to play with eight because i think the max we've played with was seven oh man it is just so ridiculous again the different game modes we've come up with is just absolutely outrageous one thing i will tell you the best way that we've learned to play this game um that kind of utilizes the more standard rules is while you're trying to stack your cups to get to the top if you end up getting a coconut into one of your opponent's cups you can steal it so i left you with something there but i'll leave a link in the description for the review when i end up completing that but that's going to be coconuts number 42 betrayal house on the hill shout out to nick walensky for actually teaching in this game i'll be honest with you when i first got it and opened up the box all the components were extremely intimidating but i'm so glad he got us through this game because i wouldn't I wouldn't have got the experience that I did without that. This game is awesome. You're exploring this haunted house to get items. And at some point when a certain condition is met with the dice, there is a haunt that begins. And the haunt makes things rather interesting each game because they can be different haunts. It could be something from you being invisible, you being a demon, or everyone shrinking down and someone's a giant cat. You're trying to get to a helicopter to escape the mansion. It gets ridiculous. And I probably gave you more than I should have, but we've had so much fun with this. And and I think the big selling point for us is we really get into character uh, for the character that we're playing in the game. It is so funny, so hilarious, and just 
a blast of a time. I don't see myself getting it out very often, and I'll be honest with you, I very much enjoy this one more close to the Halloween-ish time in October. But Betrayal House on the Hill, oh man, it just if, if this sounds like the kind of game for you, it probably is. Just don't be intimidated by the rules or the components, because honestly, you'll use maybe even half of them, if that, per game. Because you'll start to see different items after the different times that you play. There's so much replayability value here. And I know there's a lot of complaints about as to whether or not, you know, it's balanced and that they feel like they can't ever win um, the haunt. But I'll be honest with you, whether or not you win or not, you'll have a great time as long as you get submerged like I did. But Betrayal, House on the Hill, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out my review. And number 41, Hydro Soakers. I actually re uh, received this as a review copy um, thanks to Upsize Fun. Again, thank you so much for this game. It will be out um, soon on Kickstarter and hopefully retail and plenty of shops in the future because this game surprised me. While I do love the theme, it is a water gun fight. You have teams. It's a two player game. Yes, I know if you know me, I'm not a big fan of two player games with COVID. I've gotten the opportunity to play a little bit more and this one is one of my favorites. So you have your own team and you are having a water gun fight. You are strategically planning your movements, getting specific items that can benefit you in the game and card upgrades to upgrade some of your equipment. There's so much going on here and there's so many funny elements such as the die rolling. Obviously there's luck in the game, but the die rolls just make so many good laughs, so much fun, just like I would expect with a water gun fight. And it sits on this list for that very reason. It's a newer game in my collection, but I think over time, if I start to get a little bit more two player games in, this one will climb up a little bit more and it has a place in my collection for that very reason. But that's gonna be number 41, Hydro Soakers. Well, that's all we got today for the top 50 stay tuned for our top 40 because i promise you it'll only get better from here i hope you enjoyed this video me and volcar really appreciate <laughs> i mean volcar and i greatly appreciate it and it would really help us out if you like comment subscribe on this video and if you're interested hit that bell icon because that'll let you know when we release our newest video monday is going to be our regular board game reviews wednesday our weekly update slash talks and then on friday is my vintage board game reviews that is all i have for you guys today i will see you guys next time <laughs> uh, uh well apparently the video doesn't end until volcar says it ends so <laughs> i guess we wait <sighs>